Module four, problem number six, test the hypothesis using the p-value approach. Be sure to verify the requirements of the test. Here again, we're given the null and alternative hypotheses. So we have H naught or the null hypothesis is, is P equal to 0.8. The alternative hypothesis is P greater than 0.8. Just so you know, this is our P naught. So when we're looking at that first requirement, that 0.8, that comparison uh, proportion is our P naught. Number of observation, N is equal to 125. Number of successes, X is equal to 105. And alpha is equal to 0.05. So the first part is, is n p naught times 1 minus p naught greater than or equal to 10? Well, let's look at that calculation. So n is from the problem, that's 125. p naught, again, is from the problem, we have 0.8. And then 1 minus p naught is going to be 1 minus 0.8. So when we plug that in, we have 125 times 0.8 times 1 minus 0.8, or 0.2. And when we plug this into the calculator, we get 20, which is greater than or equal to 10. So we can say, yes, that requirement is fulfilled. Let's work. Use technology to find the p-value. Let's go to question help, stat crunch. Let's make this a little smaller. So here, we're just going to be plugging in our numbers from the problem. We're going to go to stat, proportion stats. Remember, if we're looking at the proportion. So that one's pretty obvious. If we were looking at the mean and we were doing a hypothesis test about the mean, we would be looking at t-stats. Here we have proportion stat. We only have one sample and we have with summary. We do not have the data set. In this case, we only have the summary statistics. So once that opens up the new window, the number of successes, that's our X, that's 105. Number of observations, that's our N, 125. We scroll down. As you see, hypothesis test is automatically checked. We don't need to change anything there. We do need to change our P naught to 0.8. And then our alternative hypothesis is greater than. Again, this is just given to us from the problem. Click Compute, and that brings up our new table with our p-values. You see here it gives us all the results. The one we're focused, though, is on this p-value. And we need to round to three decimal places. So remember, when you have that 1 8 there at the end, that means you're rounding this number up. So we're going to round that up to 0.132. Let's check that answer. Well done. All right. Now, what does that tell us? Do we reject or do not reject the null hypothesis? Remember, if the p-value is less than alpha, we reject the null hypothesis. Otherwise, we do not reject. Our p-value here is 0.132. Our alpha is 0 0.05. So we know that it's greater, excuse me, our p-value is greater than alpha. So we do not reject the null hypothesis because the p-value is greater than alpha. All right, that's the end of number six. If you guys have any questions or need any help this week, let me know.